Hello everyone, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily contents. Well, 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 it's good to be back. It's been, it's been a while, isn't it? It's been a while. Um, transfer deadline day happened yesterday and uh, Liverpool have only signed one player. But was it the important uh, position on the pitch that we signed for? I don't know. So let's talk about these people. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> Yes, my people, welcome to LFC Red Forever channel. Before we start, hit that notification button, subscription button, and like button, and please follow us on our social medias. It says it right there on the screen. You can see it. Uh, there's Twitter, there's Twitch, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's YouTube. So please, uh, if you haven't done all that stuff, do that right now. Um, okay, so let's discuss transfer deadline day. Uh, a lot of people was waiting around uh, for Liverpool Football Club to sign another player because we've already signed one in the beginning of the transfer window. Um, <clears throat> As everybody's aware, we have an issue at the left-hand side, which is uh, Diaz, who has a knee surgery, and uh, it looks like it's pretty bad, his injury as well. So they signed the player because of that, <coughs> uh, which is obviously uh, Cody Gatpo. Um, we signed him for the cheap, let's be honest there, and he's not even playing on the left-hand side, he's actually playing in the middle as a Firmino replacement instead of like a Diaz replacement. So we don't know the real, um, you know, cause for that transfer now, because is he signed to replace Diaz for now, or is he signed to replace the Firmino? So we, we, we don't know yet, and from what I've heard, Firmino might get a, a, a new contract uh, soon as well. So. It's a, a short-term contract, that is. So it's a lot of work ahead for Liverpool Football Club in regards to signing up, um, you know, the older players uh, to new contracts as well. Um, we've got big issues, people. We've got big issues to worry about, uh, especially in, in that midfield area, which we haven't solved f um, since four years ago. I think we, we bought Thiago. That was the last uh, midfielder we bought in that position that could cover... Uh, you know, the number six or number eight creative midfielder. He could even play as a number 10. That's where he started his career at. But we're, we're missing that link between the defense and, uh, you know, uh, attack, if you know what I mean. Like one album kind of player that could um, play all sorts of, sort of positions in that midfield and, you know, be fit for, uh, throughout the season as well. Now, we're in a position of a ninth in the league. We haven't found any replacements for those kind of players. We're not looking to buy anyone. So every season, we all we hear is wait till next season. And wait till next season again. So how long can this football club take this um, news on a regular basis? Are the owners interested because if you look at from a fan point of view if you look at from outside point of view as well it doesn't look like they're interested it doesn't look like um they want to be at liverpool football club and uh, you know the league position says a lot like we're ninth we're behind the likes of brighton and fulham and we're accepting losing to the likes of brighton as a trophy now like we played pretty well that's that's what i've heard that's been said and i'm thinking to myself um are we here just to give compliments to other teams or are we here to beat teams we're supposed to beat if you know what i mean our players that's currently in this team last season were competing for four trophies almost one for four trophies one game away so 
there's a lot of issues we have and um, it's mainly the owners because one of their priority as number one uh, if you guys don't know that like their baseball team is the major uh, pedestal like if you know what I mean like they're the number one they are everything to them we're just the second uh, at best because they're looking to buy an NBA team but the neglect of our football club is costing us to compete with the other teams if you look at Arsenal they're strengthening from a position of power but when we're in a position of power we don't strengthen if you know what I mean and it's acceptable it's like you have to accept what we, what we give you you don't matter as fans you don't, we don't care about you that's how it looks to me from from looking at from the outside we could have won that one point league titles probably twice if we strengthened in January even further but we don't even do that because those draws along the way cost us the league title Liverpool Football Club is is, is is a major concern for me at the moment people and uh, as I said after that Wolverhampton game once I watched that game and I looked at the players the way they were playing you know like from the stadium you could see how players play and uh, you could watch them thoroughly like on, on a regular basis and i watch each player the important players that is uh, in that game and majority of them were playing bar van dyke because he's injured of course and not many people are actually crying out for van dyke at the moment to come back because he's been part of this bad form as well yeah so um i watched the players thoroughly in in, in that wolverhampton game in the fa cup and uh i, I just resigned myself i said these players <laughs> ain't giving me what I come all the way from London to Liverpool for. They're not giving me 100% first of all, commitment. I don't care if you lose, win, lose or draw. It doesn't really bother me. As long as you give me 100% commitment, make me make me believe in you. And the reason, me, the reason I arrived at the game, you know, make it more important for me. The reason I sing the songs, make it more important for me. You know what I mean? It cost me a lot of money for my wages from like traveling from London to to Liverpool and plus spending in the mega store at the same time as well and stay in a hotel because I can't travel back on the same day because you know you're tired. You don't want to be you know in the in the motorway in in a tired state, if you know what I mean. So I I do all that, not just me, obviously, it's all Liverpool fans. We do all that to watch this nonsense we're watching right now. And you're not even strengthening in January to even help these players who are struggling on the pitch. I'm not even blaming the players because the players are there to get paid and play football. They have no loyalty to our football club. None of them support Liverpool Football Club apart from Trent, probably. And uh, Curtis Jones, who says he supports Liverpool, but when he comes on, he doesn't do much. You saw him against Brighton. What did he do when he came on? Nothing. Just making up the numbers. And I'm not having to go at him. It's just everything about the football club from top to bottom is a mess. And these owners want us to accept it like it's a norm. Because once, once you accept it as a norm, that's the, the, the warning sign because... You're not going to be complaining anymore. You're just going to say, oh, it's just Liverpool. It's happening on a regular basis. It's okay. Once that's okay, that means you're going to be a mid-table team and probably battling in that, in, that, in that side of the table on a regular basis. When you lower your expectation, that's what you become. Now everybody's laughing at Liverpool Football Club. Well deserved. We've been laughing at everybody else for the last seven years. But is it going to change? I don't think it is because if you look at the players, they're actually getting sent. They should have got sent off against Brighton, a few of them. Their tackles are always late. When the ball goes behind them, they can't catch in one. And that defense is always under pressure. And if you look at the two Brighton goals the other day, both of the goals came from players turning their backs when the player is about to shoot. So that shows the commitment. It's not even there, people. We're in trouble. We're in deep shit. We're in deep, deep, deep trouble. Sorry about the language, but we're in deep, deep trouble. 
And um, the sooner these owners leave, the better for the club. Um, American owners, they're here for business reasons. You could say Chelsea owners are here to spend, but that's in the beginning. Eventually, they're going to have a structure in place that they can't spend like that anymore. Let's just be honest here. Um, there's Qataris that want to buy Liverpool, but it's, it's getting stopped by you know local Liverpool fans who get benefits from the club. Uh, meaning tickets, meaning merchandise on a season basis and you know all those things they've been getting for years and years backdoor entrances they, they, they're thinking like if new owners come in forget about the religion it's nothing to do with the religion I'm a Muslim myself you know what I mean Alhamdulillah it's nothing to do with religion it's it's just to do with their own own benefits of the club that's what they are worried about it's nothing to do with the actual uh, takeover or Muslim takeover. Come on, who would then want a a a, a, mil, a billionaire owner, a trillionaire owner at their football club that can make them, you know, compete in all fronts on a regular basis? Who would have want that? I mean, so you got to think about it that way. Like, if these fans who are close to the club, that's uh, uh, local fans, and they got their own groups. Everybody knows Spirit of Shankly, Redmond TV, and all these stuff. If they all stick together and say, you know what, let's get these owners out, and um, I'm saying like fans that have influence in the club, if you know what I mean. Um, they say, let's get these owners out, get these these owners in. Maybe they, 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 things will change. Maybe um, we'll compete on all fronts, and. Um, don't have to worry about the likes of Arsenal or the likes of uh, Chelsea or Man United or Man City, etc. That's what we need. I mean, if we come all as one, we can actually achieve these things. But unfortunately, we're not coming as one. And we've got the other side, the FSG out uh, brigade. I'm part of that. I want FSG out. You know what I mean? Uh, I, uh, I know about Americans. You know what I mean? I just come back from there recently for my birthday. Um... In America, what they do is what you see is what you get. You know what I mean, that's how it is in their sport. In their sport, that only survives in their own country, and um, it doesn't go outside that. That hence why they come to this country and make us watch American football in Wembley or the Tottenham Stadium, and etc. I don't know why we do that. We have our own sport, which is football. The home of football is here. So why don't we promote our sport in their country instead of like us promoting theirs on a regular basis that never really goes above their country either. So let's concentrate on our game. Get them out of our game. You know what I mean? It's no offense to in America. I know we've got a lot of American fans, but it's just reality of life. You know what I mean? And uh, we've got a tradition in this country and in this game as well that we follow up on and it makes us love it even more, if you know, if you understand. Um... It's hard. It's hard to, to speak about FSG because, yes, in the last seven years, we competed, we've done this, we've done that. But they took a risk of not spending a lot. Now the risk is biting back because if you don't spend, the league position tells you where, you, where your club is at. And the, like I've always said, the way Liverpool are playing at the moment is a mirror image of Jurgen Klopp's um, formations with a lack of uh, personnel on the pitch as well that can actually deal with that formation if you know what I mean people so yeah there's, there's a lot of things we've got to work on and that's listen you've got to start from the top then work your way down to the bottom and that's the ownership it has to happen it has to it, 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 we, need, we need a change we need it as soon as possible and we need owners that actually care. And if there's a like a world tragedy, like another COVID, uh, God forbid, they could get in their pocket and you know spend on the team, and we can compete on a regular basis. You know what I mean? Instead of like uh, furloughing our staff and um, trying to get money in different ways uh, to pay the government back, if you know what I mean. So yeah, um, yeah, transfer deadline day, people. It's been a disaster. I'm starting to worry. I don't think we're going to finish the top four this season either. And what I'm trying to say as well is, once you get out of that top four, it's hard to get back in. Look how long it took Arsenal. Look how long it's taking Man United to get back in there. And um, it's an unforgiving position we're in at the moment as well, people. like It might not even take us next season to get back in there. It might take us longer. If these owners are still here, that is. And uh, it'll be tough. It'll be tough.
I can't see us, honestly. I can't see us getting back in the top four. It's done. It's done. We can't even win away from home. I think we won about three or two. I don't know. Something along those lines. And it's it's, it's a sad sight what's going on to, with Liverpool Football Club because it's a big, big club, isn't it? We compete for all fronts. We compete uh, for Champions League, Premier League, anything. like That's a, a trophy. Liverpool Football Club is what it's built for. That's why Bill Shankly built it. And... Um, it's just not looking pretty at the moment, people. Our fan base as well. Like we need to be careful how we go on outside the football club. Because if we're gonna fight each other on social media or things like that, it will get ugly. Uh, to the extent that uh, people's lives could be in risk. So you gotta be careful how you say things on these social medias, especially when you're protesting and all that stuff, and people are against it and etc. and things like that. Ha have a common ground, like talk about it in in a, in a in a in an adult way, and uh, understand each other where you guys are coming from, and um, you could resolve it that way instead of like uh, going back and forth, blaming this person, blaming that person, and then something uh, major comes out of it as well like if you're close to the, to the club actually like um, if you're from here, from england like in in general it's hard for you because if you say certain things and you go to the games you might get you might get recognized and it will affect you personally and that's what we don't want if you know what i mean people so you got to be careful what you say to each other on social media of course you know in this modern era it's different from what I, when i was growing up you know what i mean like we'll have words we solve it that way that's how it is nowadays you know like it's life and death you know what i mean that's what it is and people are going in that direction from the outside if you know what i mean and uh, they don't understand how it is in this country so you gotta like and they've got a lot of followers at the same time and it's it's a bit, bit risky what you're saying like especially in social media as well so just be careful what you say people and uh, have a common ground at the end of it like uh, obviously we're, get, we're gonna agree to disagree but sort it out in that way instead of like uh, getting personal and uh, fighting each other one of that type of fans well listen I, i've been supporting liverpool for many years you know what i mean we're family at the end of the day and uh, even though sometimes uh, we have issues we solve it as as one and that's the last thing you want uh, from like liverpool football club like like fights and some st something silly happening in in, in in personal lives and all that stuff yeah so just be careful how you go on about things and uh we'll sort it we'll sort it that's how we are that's how liverpool football club, football club is isn't it we eventually we sort it out and then um, we'll get back to happy days isn't it we ha we'll get back to happy days we're a long way off it on the pitch uh, which has been neglected for a while but we'll sort it out eventually so people i hope you like this um transfer deadline no nothing apart from gakpo in the beginning of the transfer um yeah top four is gone in my opinion but i hope a miracle can happen along the way um yeah just share your comments down below and just let me know what you think what i've said and uh, just about the fans in general or you know transfer or the ownership um uh, some people are asking me about the ownership as well in regards to the qataris still happening people i think it's still happening uh, from what i've heard they're, they're still talking maybe something uh, major will come in the next few days next few weeks and we'll be happier if you know what i mean so yeah well i'm back people so um i, I should be doing a live chat shows again and i'll try to do a live game during the weekend this wolves as well so please yeah just keep keep around for the channel and uh, i'll keep you updated on everything else as well Yes, people, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, you can see uh, all of our social medias as well. If you want to like, uh, send me a comment down below and let me know what you think, what I've said, uh, or share your own point of view, just put it on there. And I'll see you. I'll see you soon. Take care, everybody.